Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now today we're going to be looking at a bit of a logic build. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, and I'm actually... I wouldn't say this is a completely finished creation. However, it is functional enough that I can show it off. And I'm actually not sure how much further I can really go with this. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the laser cutter. I started working on this in a stream. It was a multi-part stream. And the reason I say I'm not sure how much further I can go on this is because of the frame rate. Um, I'm not sure if it's just caused by the pistons that are in this creation or if it's caused by the logic, but I'm having some really bad frame rate issues. I'll try and fix those here shortly. So what this does, there's kind of two major creations here to look at, which is the USB and the actual laser cutter itself. The USB was built specifically for this purpose, however I do have some uses for it other than the laser cutter. So this is a sequential ROM, ROM standing for read only memory, and the memory itself is stored on the top in painted black lines. And when I say sequential, what I mean is every single time it gets a clock pulse through the interface here, it will move either one tick forward or one tick back and read whatever is on that line. Hopefully that made sense. And it interfaces through a controller, which the controller you see is right here. And I just fell off the platform. This is the controller itself. And there are little pins that speak back and forth between the creation that's running it and the actual USB itself. This USB just has a binary scale on it. This is 64 bytes, so 8 bits times 64, which is 64 bytes. And the commands here are purple is set, which turns it on, red is reset, and I actually do not fully remember, I think blue steps the signal forward, going that way and green steps it back it's been a while since I actually built this creation so if I say something a little bit wrong I am sorry about that so then this is where the commands are stored they are started here and interpreted and they're sent to this big board which has all the commands on it now this is meant to have multiple commands however only one of them is currently functional which is this one here, which is the draw point function. So whenever there is a command that has both the far left and the far right bit enabled, which is only on that card, I'll show it real quick. So there's a point here and a point here, which is a command saying to draw point. It is then given two coordinates, which is this and this. So this strip here is a coordinate, and then this strip here is another coordinate. The laser cutter then takes those two coordinates, moves the cutting head, quote unquote, to that point, and destroys the block. Now then, the major limitation with this creation currently is the size of the storage because this is 64 bytes each draw point command takes three bytes itself so that's what like 20 or so points you can destroy and that means whatever it is you want to draw has to have 20 pixels i was going to get around this in one of two ways which was i could either make a really really big memory system which would be like a 256 byte USB stick or sequential ROM technically to give me a lot more points or which what I actually did end up trying was to do other commands like draw line. Now this isn't functional at the moment. This was meant to do some very basic line functions in the sense of either completely straight 90 degree lines or straight 45 degree lines 
It was not able to do complex diagonals and never was really intended to. And it was meant for the sole purpose of being able to draw more with less code. Because in this system, you could technically draw... You could draw two points instead of six lines of code, it'd be five. But any point over that, so if you want to draw five or six points, as long as they were in a either 90 degree or 45 degree line, you could draw them all with still five lines of code. But like I said, this is not functional and I will not be able to show it off at the moment. So let's actually cut this off to hopefully reduce some lag. If there is anything that is here that is completely necessary to the creation. And let's actually try and run one of these USBs. The USB that's currently plugged into it is not a functional one. It was just here as a demonstration piece. We'll be putting this other one in. And I just got thrown through the world. Good job, Scrap Mechanic. Hey, you're playing the game wrong. Stop that. So let's go ahead and delete this. Now these USBs were built to basically be a simple system to manage a logic build by using the sequential ROM to store memory as it does and to be easily connected. So you could easily swap these out. I do have some other designs that will probably be used in the future. I do like this. I did like it when I built it. I still think it's quite useful, but in future logic builds, I think I might be removing this USB system. Not only that, but the pistons here, I think are also a bit of the lag issue that I'm running into. So then, if I can remember how to start this thing, <laughs> I do believe it's this button. So I'm not 100% sure what this draws because I built this all quite a long time ago during a stream and I don't 100% remember what this would draw. I think I know what it is, so let's find out. So you can see in the distance the lights. that are attached to the USB. When you see the two, the far left and the far right, that's the signal to shoot point. Then there's the first coordinate. There's the second coordinate. And then it shoots. There's the draw point. First coordinate. Second coordinate. And then it shoots it. And now looking at this, I do think I know what it is. I was pretty sure from the beginning, but let's let it finish and then we'll actually take a little bit of a look at the logic itself. And there we go. It just finished and it drew a smiley face. Yes. So then, let's run this once more real quick and we can actually watch the logic tick away. Now, I was going to kind of talk through how the logic works, but to be honest, I built this so long ago that I don't fully understand what some of this actually does. I do know that this here is the technical controller for this whole command, and each line of these bits is another smaller function which does something like it asks for one of the coordinates and then saves it to the cutting head, asks for another coordinate, saves it to the cutting head, and somewhere in these two it does the whole system of shooting, resetting, and continuing. I'm not going to go any more in depth, like I said I built this a long time ago and I don't fully remember how it's supposed to work to every little detail. Um, so I am sorry about that. I'm also kind of sorry that I didn't get the other commands working and I can't really show this off more. But I am going to do one last thing before I end this episode and I'm going to show how to write some code. So this little function here, this little top board, is where you can write your code freely with a paint tool. So I'm going to go ahead and delete what's already on here. I do have it saved elsewhere. 
and I have to quickly re um, reaffirm my understanding of how the x y for this works. So x is in this direction. So this is zero zero, and then one zero two zero three zero and so on. And then y is in this direction. So it should be zero 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 one zero two zero three and so on if I am correct. Now the system should be able to go up to I think a sixty either sixty three by sixty three or sixty four by sixty four. I think it's sixty four by sixty four including zero zero, which is what this whole system is set up for at the moment. So let's say we want to draw, let's draw a quick square. And I am going to grab some paper real quick so I can start writing down coordinates because this is going to be fun. A few moments later. All right then. So I did all the math real quick behind the scenes to hopefully speed up this process. So I should have a picture on screen of my actual work. And we're going to be doing a four by four square so I had to draw that square, find out where each point would be, write down those coordinates, and then convert those coordinates into binary. So then, let us begin. So for every two coordinates, there needs to be a draw point. So draw point, draw point. And we need how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 in total, so 1, 2, 3... So there's the 12 points we need, and now to write down the binary. So 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 810. Now I should mention that this strip here that has the caution blocks on it, this is a dead strip. This is because this is two 32 byte USBs that have been stuck together and worked together. So this is the divide where those two separate systems are connected. And as a result, there is no sensors here which are able to detect the painted blocks, which is why this is a dead section. So then, this should draw an, us a nice square. I'm going to quickly cover up the smiley face we drew. It shouldn't interact with it, but I am still going to cover it up just in case. Let us hit run. If I was not getting stuck on blocks randomly. And let us see this. So I am going to end the video here. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. Any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. And right now, share this help the channel the most. So if you do want to help the channel, please share this episode with a friend. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.